All right, guys. So welcome back to another one here. So uh, as promised, you guys showed me that you liked the last jugging video. So we'll do another one. Um, like I said, guys, if you if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button. You can take a second right now and hit it. Uh, it really shows me what you guys are interested in. So you guys showed me you're interested in the jugging video. So we're back out here doing a little jug fishing this afternoon. I've got about, I don't know, two and a half, three hours here. So we'll see what we can put in the cooler. So today we're changing it up a little bit. Uh, today we're going to be using bluegill. So last time I used shad, and uh, you know the water's warmed up. It's about a week later or so, and uh, these fish are they're kind of in transition period. So the bluegill have moved up shallow. So we're kind of matching the hatch. The shad, which were shallow last week, are not there anymore. They're out in the deep water. So we're kind of matching the hatch. We're using bluegill. That's what these catfish are feeding on is the small bluegill, the fry. These bluegills are spawning as well as bluegill in general is a tougher bait. So as the water warms up, the turtles come out and uh, the turtles can play havoc on your jug lines. But uh, a bluegill is a little bit tougher. It's a little firmer meat. It's got a little bit tougher skin. I'll just kind of show you here. Uh, here's just a small piece of bluegill here uh, that, that I use. Just about an uh, inch piece. Lots of hook gap there, and uh, and that's what we're using. Still very effective uh, at catching the catfish and just a little bit more durable. So I've got the first 10 baited up as usual. We'll go through the same run. I'll uh, fire up this motor and we'll chuck them out, and then uh, and then we'll get to catching fish here. All right, so. It's, the water's warmer, it's about a week later. These fish are slowly pushing shallow, so I'm gonna fish just a little bit closer to the bank than I was before, just because I know these fish are getting up. They should be getting close to spawning. So I push myself up a little further towards the back end of the lake, as well as we're fishing just a little bit closer to the bank. We'll just continue on here. You can see I'm probably fishing I don't know, probably 30 yards or so from the shore. The wind's kind of behind my back, so it's gonna take these jugs kind of right down the shoreline and push a few out into the middle. I want my jugs to move, guys. I don't want them to stay in one spot. Uh, you know, it's no different than fishing with rod and reel. If, if you're not catching fish, you need to be moving. So that's what I want to do. the rest of these thrown out guys and then we'll uh, bait up the other 10 I'll of course I'll move to a different location cover different water so got the next 10 baited up you can see the first 10 are way behind me there uh, I'm gonna chuck these other 10 out good ways away down a different bank and let them drift I've also got my buddy he's up here with me today uh, him and his wife so they've got that side of the cove covered so we've got like 40 some odd hooks just drifted down through here in different varying depths and uh, you know it's a super effective way to cover some water. Like I said, we're on a meat run today uh, and you can see I'm not using a big, big chunk of bait. And the reason being is, you know, as I said before, we're looking for that, you know, five to seven pound channel. Uh, we're, not, we're not after the big fish and not only that, uh, I don't want a fish sitting there for a long amount of time messing with this jug. I want him to have a big enough piece of bait that he can come up, suck it in, take it out, get hooked, and move on. Uh, and it's just the most effective way to, uh, to go about this jug fishing. So anyway, I'm going to chuck these jugs out down through this cove here, uh, this side of this bank, and uh, then we're going to go sit down and uh, have us a cold beer and wait for uh, these jugs to start popping. simple straightforward guys not a lot of not a lot of science to it here name of the game is covering water with this jug fishing thing and that's exactly what what we're doing here all right so I jumped in the boat with my buddy and his wife. 
because they got two jugs that just went off. We're just sitting here having a cold beer while uh, while we wait. So let's see, we got that jug just right there. Let's see. Go ahead and grab it, Cassie, and we'll see what, what we've got. There it is. We'll have a channel. Get the next one here. Get the next one. He's got two in a row that went off, so we'll see here. Sean's got a little different design on his jugs than I do. Oh, it's got off. Ah. Got off. Yep. Right on there. So Sean's got a little different des design on his jugs than, uh, than mine. So if you guys would like to see how he does it, hit that like button. And uh, we'll get him over and uh, we'll show you guys how he makes his jugs. Like I said, there's no perfect way. Um, but just let me know. Hit that like button. All right, so I jumped in Sean's boat for no other reason than he's running a four-stroke, and it's just a lot easier to edit out the sound of the motor. So uh, go ahead and grab it, somebody. You guys can see it right back there, standing up. That could be a good fish there. Get it? That's a pretty good one, huh? Yeah. That's a decent one. That's, what, 23, 24 inches? Oh, yeah. Something like that, five, six pounds. That's what we're after, guys. That's what we're after, them good little eaters there. That fish will clean up real nice. So I think we, we just checked and Sean's running green jugs and I'm running the red or pink or whatever you call it. And uh, I've got, I think I've got three more standing up. So we're gonna go run through there and uh, kind of just reorganize and isolate. All right, coming up to another one here. This one here, we think for sure has got a fish on it. It's pulled the jug good little ways. Get him in. There you go. We got a good little male there, huh? Yeah. Nice little male, four or five pounds. There we go, another fish. We got another one, guys. Let's see what we got there. It's got to be some kind of a decent fish, huh? This is nice. I don't have to do anything. What we got? A little bitty eater. A little bitty guy, what? A pound and a half, two pounds? A little bitty guy. Yeah. Alright guys. So we think we may have a big fish on this one. It dumped it. I'm gonna see if Cassie can't screw it up here. Don't lose it. <laughs> Try not to. Don't lose it. Get it? Get it. Don't lose, lose it. it. Get it. Don't lose it. Ah! Oh, it's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't a bad one, huh? That's a good one. There you go. That's a, uh, we're gonna say what, 22, 23 inch again? Yeah. I'd say. That's a good one, four or five pounds. So anyway, we're stacking them up here. Uh, we got a lot of hooks out. It's a little slower than it was last week. And I think a lot of that's just because the fish are they're pushing up real shallow spawning. And we're on the second day of a high pressure. But uh, anyway, it's a good time. We're killing, killing an afternoon. It's a good fun time, so. All right, so we got another one here. Pulled the jug a decent little way, so let's see what we don't get here. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. See what you got. Oh, you don't feel very big. No, decent one. Not bad. Probably what, three pounds or so? Oh, yeah. There you go, guys. So, as you can see there, uh, bluegill is working pretty good. Like I said, the, the bluegill are up shallow, the bluegill are spawning, so we're kind of just matching the hatch. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of a great way to use a bait that's available. Of course, you got to check your local state and regulations. Here, we can use bluegill as long as they're caught in the body of water that we use them legally. Uh, you know, so rod and reel basically, but yeah, anyway, bluegill's a good bait. Um, it's just a little bit more durable than shad, so uh, yeah, if you guys have an opportunity, give it a try. So we got another one going here. He's really doing big things. Pretty good one, huh? Look at him go. Look at him go. 
need the net. Oh, there we go. It's another good one, guys. That's what we're after. Those eater class fish. It's probably what three pounds. It's a good one. All right. So we got a green one and a pink one. So I win. A red, whatever you want to call it. Just drive straight in. And we'll grab her. Definitely got a fish on it. A little reverse. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, oh. Need oh. the net? Maybe. That's a good one, okay. huh? There we go. There we go, guys. That's another good one. Boy, our average has been good. We haven't caught a ton of them, but our average has been pretty good. That's another, or what, three pounder? So in that 22 inch range. Circle hook right in the corner of the mouth, guys. We're doing pretty good. Coming up on another one, guys. Let's see what this one looks like. Definitely got a fish on. Right in the buck brush. A little reverse. Good one? Decent, huh? About the same. So these are what we're catching, guys. These uh, 20 inches or so, a couple pounders. These are good eating fish. We're just freezing, filling the freezer right now. There we go, guys. All right, guys, so we're getting later in the day here. We're starting to pick up jugs, but we've got this one here that's going. It seems to be a pretty good fish. It's really taking, uh, taking the jug for a, for a swim there, so we'll see what we've got. Pretty good one? Oh yeah. Need a dip net? That's a decent one, huh? That's in that five, six pound range. Pretty good fish. I don't know what that makes if we kind of lost track. Uh, that's a pretty fair fish there. Somewhere in that mid 20s range. So anyway guys, we're uh, we're picking up jugs here. Gotta get back to the ramp and clean fish here before it gets too awful dark. But uh, I kind of lost track, but we gotta be what, 15 or so? We're picking up jugs, guys, because it's getting close to dark and uh, we may have a decent, we may have the big fish of the day. It'd take a pretty good fish to pull that, pull that noodle under. Oh, God. <laughs> what do we got? Grab the, grab got the PVC. Nope. Okay. What do we got Ooh, here? He's underneath. Isn't it? He's not coming up. It's a good one, he's huh? He's coming. He's coming. I see. Oh, oh God! That's a good <laughs> play here, oh, guys. Crap. Look at that. Woo! That's a good flathead there, guys, huh? So for all you guys that say you can't catch flathead on cut bait, that's a pretty good flathead, huh? Me. Oh, I think you got the hook in the net there. Me fire. Oh. There you go. All right. So that's a that's a pretty good flathead there, guys. It's probably uh, pushing the 20 pound range. Caught him on the jug. Just a little piece of uh, of bluegill. You can see that circle hook did. Just a fine job, that small circle hook. But uh, look at that. That's a good one. That's a good one, huh? That's a nice flathead. I was not expecting that one. <laughs> there we go, guys. All right, so we're picking up jugs here. It's getting dark, and uh, this jug here's got something going on. So let's see what we got here. We just got that good 25 pound flathead. I doubt we can beat it, but what do we have here? Good one, huh? There we go. That's a four or five. Let's see him here. Let's show him to the camera, huh? That's a 20, 22 inch range. Good four or five pounder. That's a good one. We are filling the freezer today, guys. All right, guys. So we're going to clean this flathead for you guys here. Um, we just weighed this fish. It weighs just a hair over 25 pounds. Come down off the dorsal fin there. 
And you can see that line right there. That's where the ribs are. So we'll just bounce right down that rib cage there and hug right to the center of the of the backbone here. Dive right down. And we'll pull that big slab of meat off right there off that big fish. Now, with the flatheads, this fish in particular, any fish over I'd say 10, 12 pounds, uh, the, you're gonna be able to pull the cheek meat and the belly meat off of them. So we'll come in here and right behind the eye, we're gonna dive our knife in. And we're gonna take that nice chunk of meat off right behind the eye, and that's a cheek meat. Then we're gonna come over here, dive right in, right behind the eye. And you can feel that bone there, you can only go so far. And we'll just take that nice, nice chunk of cheek meat off. Not a big chunk of meat, but uh, boy, that's that's super good meat there. You can see that nice little chunk of meat. All right, so now we're gonna take and we're gonna flip this fish over. We're gonna come in right here by the pectoral fin. We're gonna dive our knife in, and we're just gonna make a cut towards the anal fin there. We're gonna come in on the other side. Make a cut right over toward the other pectoral fin. Dive right down towards the pectoral fin there. The anal fin there. And we'll cut that away. And then we're just gonna take I make a flat cut right there. So you can see, this is a 25 pound fish and that's probably an inch thick piece of meat. And we haven't wasted hardly any, any meat on that fish. So then we're gonna come in. All right, so then we're gonna come in here and you can see that nice piece of belly meat here. We'll start out with that. So that's got the skin on the backside and we're just gonna fillet that off just like we would any other fillet. kind of get our knife started in there and there's almost two halves of it. We'll just run our knife down that on the skin side and there's our belly meat of that flathead. There's two sides of it here. Just clean up the fat there. And then you can see there's almost like a what would be like I would call a silver skin on a deer on the inside, on the belly lining. So we'll just take our knife and run our knife right down that. You can see that's just kind of the, the silver skin lining there. And that there is the belly meat. And you can see that compared to the size of my hand, that's bigger than the size of my hand on a, on a 25 pound fish. And that is what a lot of people consider the optimal piece of meat on a flathead. Here we got the other piece of meat. We'll just kind of clean that up real nice and neat. There's that other nice piece of meat. We'll throw them in our bucket here. So then we'll come to the cheek meat here. This is just a little morsel here. Not a lot of meat here, but it is super tender. So we'll just flay that off the skin. No different than any other piece of meat. That's a nice little nugget of meat. That's the cheek meat. We'll do that on both sides here. There's the other side. You can see that you get a nice little nugget of meat there. Then we'll come to the fillets here. So this is a 25 pound fish. This is a decent little fillet here, probably 20 inches long or so. Um, we'll come in at it. Just no different than we would any other fillet here. Um, I like to come at it on the side of my fillet board. Just riding just a little bit high. So there we go. These flatheads do have a little bit of red meat. It's not near as bad as a blue cat or, or a channel cat, but you can see we picked a lot of that off there by riding a little high with our knife. We'll dress that up just a little bit with our knife. 
just taking a lot of that red meat off in that mud vein. And that's where your bad taste comes from your catfish. So a flathead in particular will have a kind of a coarser meat. It, it's almost uh, it's almost got it got the texture of chicken. So you can see here, I'm just removing what would be the mud vein and the red meat. We'll just remove that from that flathead here. Dress that up and this meat has got a real flaky texture. Whenever you fry it up, it'll have a real, real flaky texture. And uh, I urge people to not fry this whole filet. It, it's gonna be, it's good. It's a lot to filet. It's a lot to fry in one sitting. So I'll just kind of dress it up, take the fat off of it. And then I'll cut it up into what would be friable chunks. So you can see that's a nice little friable chunk here. We'll equal it up. That's three nice equal pieces. You can throw that in a fryer and uh, it'll all fry really equally. Um, fried flathead is by far the best way to eat flathead. And that is one 25 pound flathead. We've got the cheek meat, we've got the belly meat, and we've got the, uh, the fillets off of it ready to go. That's how you fillet a flathead, guys. All right, guys. So I was just editing out this video and I realized that I I didn't film an outro, um, so just thought I'd step outside here, kind of wrap this video up. Um, just actually got the garden in last night. Uh, it finally dried up enough and quit raining, so we are got the garden for the most part in. Pretty excited about that. Um, we're getting about the time of year where we can start doing our bow fishing at night uh, over the lights. So if you guys would like to see videos like that, definitely leave a comment below. Uh, hit that like button. It really helps me, uh, helps me out. I, I really appreciate the uh, the views and the new subs lately. I hope you guys are really enjoying the content that I've been trying to bring to this channel lately. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much. Like I said, hit that like button, leave a comment. Let me know what kind of videos you guys would like to see next, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.